on Moving Forward This Week, a story that seems 20 years in the making. The globally harmonized system of suppliers, classifications, and labeling of chemicals. The global harmonization system, or what will widely be referred to as GHS. We bring you an in-depth look at how it has come to be the new standard by which all of us, employers, employees, consumers, and manufacturers will be considerably safer. All hazardous materials will be classified to GHS criteria. New labels prepared and printed, GHS compliant safety data sheets, and of course, the most important effort, training in the new system. Stay tuned. We have the entire story of how the world of industrial safety is changing. When the average person thinks about global harmonization, they might immediately think that artists, musicians, or even poets would be involved. Well, think again. The globally harmonized system, you'd be forgiven for not knowing what it is. For a change that will affect everyone, it isn't exactly a phrase on the lips of every citizen. But that is the aim of this far-reaching program that began in 1992 at the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. It was there that the world acknowledged they had a problem with identifying and communicating the possible consequences of materials and hazards and how they best be dealt with. It seemed like every country had their own symbols and their own way of reporting about hazards. But what was best and how to make it easy was a conversation that took nearly 20 years. Which brings us here, where the tire meets the road, or in this case, where the signs meet the wall. It's all about uniformity, and in manufacturing plants around the world, this standard is already being used. It's a simple idea, really. Using the common points of reference, the handling of hazardous materials, and their relationship with the environment. Now, we'll come back to that important point later and how it needs to be a lot safer. But how do you get the entire world to agree on anything? Remember 1992? That's our starting point. Now, a good majority of the world's developed countries and industries are either in the process of adopting change or are already deep into training and fully using it. If you're a chemical supplier, you have to make sure that whichever country your chemical is marketed in, it meets the laws and regulations of that country for hazardous chemicals. Now imagine, you, you want to be competitive, you, you want to make good profit on your product, but every country you go to, you have to use a different standard to determine whether or not it's hazardous. It's nonsense, it doesn't make any sense at all. So from a supplier's viewpoint, it's a no-brainer. Let's make it the same all over the world. Then I only have to do the classification once, and it's good for wherever I want to market it. Clear and concise, that is the goal of the global harmonization system. However, no change comes without learning. That means training is the key to making the global harmonization system work. The training component of the globally harmonized system is huge. For some people who have some knowledge of the chemical industry, it won't mean complete retraining, but for most people, it will be entirely new training. Not only are we going to have to train people who are in the manufacturing industries of chemicals, and that will include things like pesticides, pharmaceuticals, as well as all the other chemicals we use in commerce. So the manufacturers are going to have to train their staff in the globally harmonized system, but also all their downstream customers are going to have to be trained so that people that use cleaning solutions, people that use uh, fluids, oils, lubricants, polishes, floor waxes, all of these people are going to have to be trained in the globally harmonized system. It starts with these nine symbols. In three separate categories, it tells a story about what is hazardous, not just to people, but to the environment. Now that's a big change to the way we handle information. And another big change is, it isn't just how we handle it, it's the environmental hazards we face, literally. Water quality, air quality, we know these things are important, but now employees will know exactly what chemicals do what to our environment. Some will be familiar, but familiarizing only makes sense. This material can blow up. This one is flammable, corrosive. But they get detailed here, like this one. 
showing prolonged exposure may cause health problems. If you've got some color code recognition of what your GHS products are, then everybody knows the moment they see that color code or that particular format, it's about GHS. It reinforces the whole safety program in an organization. GHS signage is an important tool, but it is just that, a tool. When we supply people with the right tools, they can do great work. That's why training with easy to use, easy to recognize materials makes sense. From suppliers who must classify hazardous materials to GHS standards, label all materials shipped, and provide GHS safety data sheets to employers who need to label containers of hazardous materials used in the workplace, provide safety data sheets, and provide training to employees who ultimately need to participate actively in the training and use the training to work safer. There are definitely some positives here, and the symbols are a big part of it. But the new SDS, or what some workers might know as MSDS, are easy to use because no matter where you are in the world, they're the same. Now there's 16 points of references whether you're working out of America or Asia. It will take out a major portion of safety training specifically for your plant out of the equation because safety will become standard. Of course worker safety was the impetus behind the globally harmonized system, but the added benefit is clearly a savings in worker training in many other areas. It's easy to figure out the loss to the economy in really any size business when it comes to lost person hours due to workplace injury. But it is far more ambiguous, the dollars that go out the door due to miscommunication, or worse, legal fees. If you're an employer, you have a legal obligation, a duty of care to make sure that your staff are working safely. Now, if you're dealing with one set of regulations in one country and a different set in another country, it makes your job so much harder to make sure you are covering your duty of care for your staff. It's enormously sensible to have all those hazard communication regulations the same so that you know that when you implement a program to train staff in one country, it's going to work in another country too. Incom has become a leader in getting information to industry. Their history of getting safety information out spans decades. So when we wanted to negotiate the new world of physical hazards, health hazards and environmental hazards, we knew that they were the logical starting point. They've got to reclassify or check their current classific hazard classifications. Okay? Just because, should we say, that your product wasn't considered flammable under the old system doesn't mean that under the new system it will escape as well <laughs> because the new criteria under the GHS are much broader than the criteria that existed previously in almost every country. So the GHS captures more hazardous materials. So you have to start from square one look at all the hazardous materials and some of the non-hazardous materials as well that you considered were non-hazardous under the old system and look at the standards of the GHS and reclassify them. That's a big task. It's labor intensive and it requires very skilled people to do it. The global harmonization system, who knew that it would be industry leading the world to common ground? GHS, the same standards to decide what is hazardous. The same symbols, be it chemical supplier labels, consumer labels, or transportation of dangerous goods. Standard formats and wording for labels and safety data sheets. And regulations ensuring chemical suppliers, employers, and workers are all invested in safety. Training and consultation is now available. For a complete guide and training information, contact ghssafety.com or 1-800-263-6238 or 905-648-0774. This has been another episode of Moving Forward. Moving Forward would like to thank Incom Manufacturing Group, ghssafety.com and Dr. David Halton.